Hey friends, welcome back to Minute Rockets. Thanks for tuning in. Finally today we're coming to the end of our motor build and we're going to assemble it and test fire it. So first thing we need to do is cut our liner to length. We're just going to measure out the length we need for our motor according to the plans that we had in the first video. You can also determine the length of the liner by just adding up the length of each of the fuel grains that you have as well as adding in the length of the shoulder on your nozzle and your forward closure. Or you can just stack everything together and measure the length you need with a ruler. So just a quick cut on the bandsaw and then we have our liner the length we need it. If you don't have a bandsaw then any sort of like sharp razor saw or even an exacto knife will get the liner cut. The goal is just to get the liner the length you need it. Another way to get liners is to save liners from commercial motors that you fly. A lot of times the liners after one flight are still usable or you can collect liners from your friends that are flying commercial motors. Now that we have our liner cut we can start to assemble everything that we need to build our motor. So we have our motor grains, our nozzle, forward closure, and the anchor bolt for the front of the forward closure, and some grease, and our o-ring, and a bolt, and a wrench, and some loctite, and the motor case. So we'll start our assembly by putting a nut on our anchor bolt with some Loctite. That's just to make sure it doesn't unscrew. One of the failure modes that you'll see with research motors is that you connect your parachute to the front of the motor and this uh, anchor bolt can unscrew from the front of the motor and then your rocket comes in without the parachute and your parachute flies away. So the Loctite just helps make sure that it doesn't unscrew. And then we want it to be really tight, as tight as we can get it down against the forward closure. That way we can make sure that that's not gonna unscrew while it's under parachute. Also putting a swivel on your parachute can really help. So with the forward closer completed, we'll move on to the liner. So now we'll take our liner and we'll sand the end of it to get those little burrs off or the fuzz off that the bandsaw left. So just some sandpaper, like 100 grit, doesn't really matter what grit it is. Just a quick sanding with that. We'll take that fuzz off the end of the liner. With the liner sanded, we can do a quick test fit, just putting the nozzle and the forward closure on the liner and sliding the whole assembly into the case and just making sure that the liner is the right length and we can see both of the snap ring grooves and everything looks good on this one. If the liner were too long, you could sand it a little bit shorter at this point. Now with everything prepped, we can grab our snap ring pliers and our two snap rings and go ahead and get started on our motor assembly. First, we'll take some grease and grease our o-rings. You just want to have a nice thin sheen of grease on your o-rings. The purpose of this is to allow the o-rings to seal on the grooves and the case and the grease prevents the o-rings from twisting and helps them seal up. Mostly it helps keep them from twisting or getting pinched during assembly. I'm using a grease called Super Lube and it's what's shipped with a lot of commercial motors that you'll buy. You can also use something like Vaseline or another high quality grease. So once we have the o-rings greased we can put them on the nozzle and the forward closure. Just slide them on into the groove and make sure that they're fully seated in the groove there. And that's it. Next I like to put a good amount of grease on the shoulder on the forward closure and the nozzle where it's going to seat into the liner. Also some grease on the bottom of the forward closer. This just helps protect the joint to keep any hot gases from getting past the liner into one of the ends of the motor. If you get put a good amount of grease here then it's going to seal up that surface. It's also going to make cleanup a lot easier. Anywhere you put the grease the burn propellant isn't really going to stick to the case or the closers. And we'll put some grease in the case and that will help the o-rings to slide into the case without again rolling or getting pinched and helps just protect the, those surfaces on the case during installation and also helps the o-rings seal up. Next we'll go ahead and take our propellant grains and insert them into the liner. Just slide them in there one after the other. And it should be just enough to leave a gap on each end for our two closures to go on. So we'll put the nozzle on one end, just go ahead and slide it on. That grease should make a good seal there. And then slide that into the back end of the motor. Push it in so the o-ring gets past the groove. And then I go ahead and put the snap ring on this end. That way there's no chance of the nozzle sliding out while I'm doing the other end. And make sure the snap ring gets in that groove. Sometimes it'll look like it's in the groove and it won't have snapped into the groove all the way and that can be a cause of a Kato. If that snap ring isn't all the way in the groove then when the motor starts to pressurize it can pop the closure off of one end and that can cause a lot of problems. So you can see now that we have our 
nozzle in that the propellant comes just shy of the end of the liner so the shoulder on our forward closure is going to go right over that liner and then we're going to have just enough space to put our forward snap ring on. So we'll go ahead and slide our forward closure in and we have just enough room there to put on our front sna forward snap ring. So we'll go ahead and put on our forward snap ring to complete the assembly of this motor. And again, push that snap ring in to make sure you hear that positive click of it going in the groove. And you can see with the ears of the snap ring that they're in the groove. So you want to check the two ears where the snap ring pliers go and you want to check the other end of the snap ring and make sure it's in the groove all the way around. And you want to give a good tug on each end to make sure things aren't going to slide out. And with that, our motor is complete, finally. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's burn our motor. Here's a static test. Haha, <laughs> that was cool. Now let's put it in a crusty old rocket and take it for a flight. Going in five, four, three, two, one. Nice. And one more flight for good measure. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I love it! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. So that's all I have for you today. Hope you enjoyed this series. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of content, and I hope you all have a great day.